Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Jonathan Friedman, and we're coming to you today from Fenway Park, the legendary Fenway Park, alongside my co-host, Evan Macedo from Sapers and Wallach. Oh, yeah, the legendary Fenway Park. What an honor to be here, Jonathan. Wonderful. And our next guest, uh, who uh, comes from a legendary organization in its own right, uh, Colin March, who heads up commercial banking uh, for Eastern Mass and Northern New England for Key Bank. It's a pleasure to have you on Radio Entrepreneurs. Thank Welcome. you very much for having me. Great to be here. You want to just tell our listeners a little about Key Bank? I know you guys are a, a considerable sized bank in the U.S. We are a little less visible in the Boston area, but we're a top 20 bank, uh, about 190 billion of assets. So we're a top 20 bank in the U.S., uh, physically operate in about 16 states. Um, and here in Boston, we have about 70 employees uh, working everything from commercial banking to um, investment banking to foreign exchange trading, rates trading. Uh, but Key Bank is uh, a, a very well-known bank in the middle market space. So mm -hmm. we define middle market as 10 million of revenue to a billion or north. Um, and we focus on that segment of the economy mostly to serve those clients with anything they need. From it, lending to deposits to treasury management services to investment banking. So really the gamut in terms of full, full service banking for, for uh, commercial accounts. That's exactly right. And this is what a lot of banks are doing now is to find a client that needs many services from the bank. And so we have this holistic primacy relationship where we can serve that client with everything they need from you know, the, the most, most basic to maybe more complex. If they're looking to acquire another company or sell their own company or list on the stock exchange, banks are looking for that client where they can do everything for them. And Colin, we're in, uh, we're in Fenway, so we're in Boston, Massachusetts right now. Uh, you know, we have a lot of real estate here. We have a lot of M&A deals happening all the time. We have a lot of biotech, life science companies here. Is there any industries that you work with a little bit more and is your Boston team a little bit different from the rest of the teams you have around the country? So this is an extremely exciting and dynamic market. And for that reason, every bank wants to be in Boston. So every, it's a very competitive market. Everyone's here because we are generally, uh, well, we're generalists. And there are some specialty teams. My commercial banking team are generalists. And so in a given year, we might be more attracted to one sector than the other. So that's why it's good to have teams all over the country. Whereas Boston is going to have access to certain industries that uh, Cleveland might not have, or Denver, Buffalo, or Portland, Maine, other important markets for us. Uh, Boston's going to have, um, you know, add to that uh, uh, diversity of a client base, and that's mm -hmm. important. Um, so my team in particular, we are generalists. One day we'll be dealing with a seafood processing company, uh, a manufacturer, uh, a services company, like a, a law firm, an accounting firm. Um, or a publicly listed company, or healthcare, biotech. So it really is uh, across the whole gamut. Yeah, really crosses the whole gamut over here. I thought you were talking about Fenway Park, and you're going to say, what arena are you going to name in the Boston <laughs> area? Because yeah. uh, I know you guys have a very prominent arenas named. Uh, we, we don't sponsor. We do sponsor in uh, Cleveland and yeah. Buffalo. Uh, yeah. So if you're ever in town in uh, Cleveland, right. need tickets. I, I'm pretty sure KeyBank can get you tickets there. <laughs> uh, in Boston, we're going to be a little less successful. Now, you mentioned uh, you have $90 billion underneath your banking umbrella, which is, which is phenomenal. Uh, 190. 190. Don't forget that's that first regional 100. bank. So that wow. can, that, that's right in that. Uh, I'm sure last year you heard about regional banks, yeah. and there was a bit, of a, a bit of a hiccup in the banking market last year. So we're right in that, uh, we were right in that storm of that regional banking uh, um, you know, issue that was boiling up. Uh, we did great, but mm -hmm. we're that size that is big enough to be able to serve clients with everything they need, a very robust, large bank, mm -hmm. but not so huge, uh, like the, what we call the trillionaire banks. Uh, we're a little more cozy, a little more um, nimble. We act a little quicker. Yeah. So we're between maybe the larger community banks and then the really, really large banks. So we're, we're a super regional. That's fantastic. And I know that banks are really trying to promote their technology. You know, there's a lot of AI companies out there trying to create all kinds of new different types of unique ideas and business initiatives. Is there any place that you guys are really trying to invest uh, this coming year to make things a little bit better, easier, faster, stronger for your clients? Yeah, so because of the size that we are, our strategy has been to partner with fintechs. Uh, maybe invest in them, maybe uh, um, sell or white label their product, maybe buy them and bring them in-house. We have not taken the approach that other larger banks have done where they're going to invest billions of dollars in house to to build up the tech, to we don't we don't do that. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody to else, build something that doesn't work. Somebody <laughs> else, yeah, or or, or, or you know, say, yeah. right, not as well as maybe <laughs> right. the fintechs that do it, uh, you know, from scratch or, or you know more natively. So uh, so we're working with the best technology providers, 
to deliver those services to our customers um, mm -hmm. from the consumer side and you know retail all the way to the large businesses we think and what we have seen is that most businesses are looking for technology solutions and optimizing you know let's stop writing checks for example and let's do everything a little more electronically yeah. uh, and let's counter fraud or let's just do things more efficiently they want to do those through their banks so they want this one-stop shopping and they trust their banks and they trust the banks to vet partners and uh we're providing those services to our clients as opposed to a client having to go piecemeal and put all these pieces together you know from uh that huge world of fintechs we're putting those in house and then delivering a holistic solution to our clients and and you find that the client expectation over perhaps the last decade or so has shifted more towards i i don't want to use the private banking model but where everybody expects you know a commercial bank to really have almost that private bank feel in terms of you know direct access not calling into you know just getting a person uh and and they want that relationship it's relationships yeah and have, so uh so yes and i'll, I'll so um, I think we're all spoiled by dealing with Amazon and Apple and Netflix. <laughs> and so banks, banks are a little slower. And I think banks need to um, not get complacent on what uh, both retail consumers and small businesses and large businesses are, are getting in the rest of their lives and in the rest of their business right. operations. Immediacy and accuracy. And the, and the banks and... <laughs> need to keep up. And maybe that's going to also be through AI. There's always going to be a human touch. We are very hands-on. Uh, our, certainly our commercial clients aren't calling many 800 numbers, right? They're, they know where to reach us. Mm -hmm. And we have relationship managers who can guide that client throughout the entire bank and get them anything they need. But in general, yes, I think we need to stay uh, on our toes and to continue to invest and meet client expectations. Um, and that's through technology, that's through AI, that's through automation. Um, we think branches are still important, but it's, you know, branch footprints have been shrinking because people want to do everything electronically. And that's both from the individual retail consumer up to uh, large companies. Yeah, and I think uh, the advent of technology, you know, sort of going back to the dinosaur age is people weren't transacting business 24 hours a day. Today they are. And, uh, you know, you may have a CFO that has an issue at eight o'clock on a Friday night. Yeah. He wants it resolved at eight o'clock on a Friday night. He doesn't want to go through the weekend, you, you know, dealing with it. That's so. right. And that's where we blend the, the technology and process improvement and, you know, everything we can do with a human touch. So we don't have our clients, certainly in a commercial bank, getting frustrated. They can't reach a, a human. They know where to find. We're a team, right? We, we, most of our clients talk to five or six people at Key. They can get in touch with any one of us and we'll, uh, you know, try to connect the dots um, while being aided by... Uh, technology and smooth processes. And Colin, I wanted to ask a million dollar question over here. Uh, interest rates, you know, I want to say a year and a half ago, they were maybe floating around 4%. I've seen them go up to 8%. But I know a lot of people are wondering, have we hit the climax of the interest rate hikes? And will we start seeing interest rates slowly uh, start to dip down later this year? And is it going to be soon? Is it going to be maybe to the middle later part of the year? I know you might not have all, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but I know that is a huge question we're always getting in my financial services business. So I'd love to hear your answer. And one of the great things we do when we're underwriting credit or analyzing credit or working with our clients, instead of forecasting, we do a lot of scenario planning. So we're ready for uh, many, many scenarios that could happen in any given year. So we don't try to guess when there's gonna be a recession, when are rates falling or rising. We try to make sure our clients and we as a bank are ready for different environments. Uh, so it's very hard to forecast uh, the macro environment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd probably be guaranteed of being wrong if I tried to. <laughs> uh, certainly the message from the Fed and what is priced into the market are cuts this year. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly a cessation of increases. So we had a very volatile, very steep rise from 2022 into 2023. Uh, the biggest in over 40 years. So it was, it was very dramatic, which led to this shock in the banking system. That's gonna calm down um, and, and, and rates should be flat to falling this year. I would temper um, too much optimism mm -hmm. on people who think it's going back to zero or it's gonna fall a lot. That's not normal, okay? So that's just people seeing it. Well, it was like that for the past 10 or 15 years. So we'll just, you know, I'll, I'll get a loan when it goes back to zero or mortgages go back to, you know, two and seven eighths or 3%. I, I don't think that's happening. And over the past, you know, 40, 50 years, that was very, very abnormal. So in this Fed environment of 5 to 5.5%, or maybe we'll go down to 45 that's not abnormal uh, mm -hmm. historically. 
And so uh, I think it's likely that rates will fall, uh, start to fall this year, but I wouldn't be expecting a dramatic cut. Um, but even a little bit of cut and people just having that assurance that rates are done rising could trigger more transactions, more mergers and acquisitions, mm -hmm. people taking loans. That, that was my follow-up question in terms of over the last couple of years uh, where you guys have maintained stability, but there's been volatility in the market. Um, you know, looking back on it, what, which levers did you push and pull to, to, to stay stable? Because, you know, I imagine a lot of your clients, when you, when you see an interest rate double and, and treble in, in, over the course of a year, um, it's got real material impact on operations. And, and so, you know, to have a banker who's supporting you and, and to helping you guide and figure it out, is that, is that where, did your bankers get in there in the trenches with, with your clients? And for sure. So a lot of people knew that we were in a period of low rates. And if they were taking debt for three, five, seven years or beyond, whether that's for real estate or equipment, uh, they would lock in a rate. So many people were not uh, floating when they knew they were taking longer dated exposure. And so they would do that through interest rate swaps. They would hedge or they would take a fixed rate from the bank. Um, but uh, um, it, it, it certainly has caught some people up by surprise, this, this increase. We don't see a lot of stress, though, on our assets, on our loans. The businesses, sure, they were squeezed. Most of them are very healthy. So most of these businesses, um, they don't want higher interest rates. But again, that's come also with inflation. Right. Maybe the revenues have outpaced costs, hopefully, uh, depending on the business. And so we're particularly not seeing... Um, a huge amount of uh, uh, stress in the businesses we cover and the loans on our books are very very strong uh, the where you're hearing uh, some nerves is around um, you know people either say real estate or commercial real estate or more specifically office space mm -hmm. so there are certain office buildings that are simply too empty and those loans are being um, they're being marked down those buildings aren't as worth as uh, as much as they the were they we worth. barely have those so key bank barely has exposure to that very very small compared to overall loans we're mostly in multifamily affordable housing when mm -hmm. we're in real estate uh, so that's where you see a bit of nerves from the uh, uh, banks on their asset quality but otherwise most of our commercial clients are operating businesses um, they're they're doing very well excellent uh, Colin, if, if people want to reach out to your commercial banking team, if they want to reach out and find out more about you guys or an opportunity that they want to bring before you, what's the best way for them to do that? They can start with me, Colin March. Uh, they can find me on uh, LinkedIn, and I'd be happy to talk to anyone about uh, any of their needs, about the economy, about baseball, uh, you know, what, whatever anybody wants to chat about, I'm always available. Excellent. Uh, our guest on uh, this segment of Radio Entrepreneurs coming to you live from Fenway Park has been Colin March. Uh, head of commercial banking for Key Bank uh, in uh, the Boston market as well as northern New England. Uh, it's been a real pleasure having you on Radio Entrepreneurs. Thank you so much. And we'll be right back with another segment uh, alongside Evan Macedo from Sabres and Wallach on Radio Entrepreneurs.